Hello, friends of the internet. I am thrilled to be here today with Tom Nesher, director and screenwriter of Come Closer, which is set to have its world premiere at Tribeca 2024 this Thursday at the Village East Angelica at 6 p.m., followed by the second screening at the same location, the Village East Angelica, this Saturday, June 8th at 12.15 p.m. Both times are Eastern, by the way. Come Closer is a drama about Eden and her increasingly desperate measures she takes to fill the void left by her brother's absence after a tragic accident. Tom, thank you uh, so much for joining me today. I'm feeling great. I'm very excited for the premiere on Thursday. So let's start with the obvious question. Uh, where mm -hmm. did the idea for the film come from? So this film is very personal to me. I started writing it five years ago when my younger brother died in a car accident. We were extremely close and I really wanted to make a film that he would love. So not like a sad family drama type of film, but more of like a fun coming of age that is both funny and provocative and has all these different elements in it. And then I just started writing this film, and here we are five years later in New York. Sorry for your loss. It's been, it'll be 10 years since my dad died this June. Sorry to hear that. Oh, thank you. But I can, I can understand the, I, I guess I can say I, could, I deeply relate to filling that void and trying to make something they would love versus, you know, Mm -hmm. that kind of self-editing you have where it's like well i want to make it this way but but uh, you know so i guess let's talk about that i can say about dealing with loss through making this film that i really felt coping with my own grief that i need this lifeline i need like a way that i can keep my brother alive and that's also the thing that is driving my main character Eden in the film she's trying to keep her brother alive she's trying to like keep on living him get more out of him more clues about who he was what he was hiding from her to keep their fun lifestyle and to keep their love alive and the relationship she has with Maya his girlfriend was exactly this thing and I felt like for me the relationship with the film was this thing like just having a way to still see beauty in life and still have like fun and be passionate about life. Uh, I think that's a great way to put it because my dad was what kickstarted my love of movies. Films like, I, I don't know if I remember all of them, but the Adrian Brody movie from 2011 that I should not be seeing, Detachment, Juno in 2009. Stuff like that, blockbusters, rentals that I definitely shouldn't have been watching. Saw three at the age I was at that time. Uh, and kind of shifting gears a little bit, a lot of what this film has to do with is there's a lot of music in this movie. And I want to talk about what your musical inspirations were. Like, what were you listening to while editing, or I guess while your editor was editing? What Spotify soundtrack or playlist did you send them? Mm -hmm. So music was extremely important for me from the very start because people usually read scripts on their computer to, like mm -hmm. in these times and not print it out. So I leave links for music for the scenes. So it's very much part of the writing process for me and part of reading the film in the very first steps. You already had a sense of the soundtrack. And I am a person who likes parties. I like fun music. And it was important for me to have that um, as part of the film. I really love dance scenes in films. Like these are my favorite scenes in cinema. So it was really, I felt so lucky that I got to have like such uh, amazing songs to, to film to. Yeah, and then talking about the filming, I, I also want to talk about the cinematography because it has a excellent look to it. Thank you. Uh, beyond re references to other films, how did you and the cinematographer, I believe, Shai Pelig, work yeah. together to create the look for the film? So Shai is 
very special because he is so fearless and Mm -hmm. so unconventional. So we had like a very small budget and we went crazy with the things that we do. Like would we did like the producers were very uh, unhappy (laughs) in certain parts of the film just because he was on a skateboard, like going through Tel Aviv with the camera, like not secured in any way or like in the scene in the water I won't give a spoiler but there's a long scene in the water towards like the climax of the film that was also an insane scene to shoot and the actresses were also so fearless and amazing we all we brought like a stunt woman and they didn't want us to use her they just didn't by themselves also the one that she's peeing from the truck she did it by herself and that was amazing so shy, our DOP was just very courageous, and I loved working with him. Yeah, probably breaking the uh, rental uh, agreement rules of the camera. Mm-hmm. And we shot also, that may be important to say, we shot a lot of the film during the re- rehearsal process. We shot it on an iPhone, and then we like recreated it with a camera. So we had a lot of, like I have scenes that I edited already, on this laptop uh, before we actually shot them just to see how would they translate um, when we do shoot them. Yeah, talk to me a little bit about what that's like because um, I know a lot more filmmakers are using iPhones to film mm-hmm. uh, film either shorts or um, I guess in the case of Steven Soderbergh, uh, full features with the iPhone. I guess, what was that process like? I feel like we're very lucky to live in a time where we have such abilities to use technology. Like, for example, you can be a person like me that is a director. I'm not an editor. I'm not a DOP. But I have Premiere on my computer and then I can edit stuff by my own. I can shoot on my iPhone. And then a lot of the process of making the film, the pre-production, we felt very confident in our decisions because we tried out a lot of things on our own with no budget. It's like we just did it by ourselves. And then some of the shots that were shot on iPhone are in the film, in the scene where one of them is in Poland and the other one is in Tel Aviv. We actually used shots from an iPhone and that's amazing that we can do that because films are so expensive. Yeah, that's awesome. And my editor brain is asking, how many times did Premiere Pro crash? <laughs> while editing uh, not so much <laughs> i have a good computer <laughs> good laptop <laughs> yeah anyhow but yeah that's intriguing like i think that's so cool because i mean i've got an iphone here i'd love to see more people using it for what would be pre i guess or concepting mm-hmm. because i mean everyone's got a phone and w- whether it be an iphone samsung you know it doesn't have to be an iPhone. I, I think that's just so interesting. And I think a lot of these editors are getting really good at, and when I say editors, I'm talking about like Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, mm-hmm. so on and so forth. I, iMovie, in some cases, are getting so good at color grading, being this one yeah. and all stop shop. Really, you could have a rough cut of the film and then go actually shoot it so that you have more of an idea, which... I think you already said something about saving a lot of budget that way. I imagine that's a 10-day shoot or however long, just to give an example, a 10-day shoot might be only five days or so, like cut in half because you don't have to do all that. Like, oh, I got to reset because I didn't like the way that looked or something like that. Mm -hmm. Totally. We had only 20 days to shoot this film. And a lot of scenes we had like only one or two takes for a shot it was very fast but and because we came so ready with the rehearsals the actresses were so ready the dop knew exactly what he was doing i had an ipad that i was doing drawings and having the shots that we shot on the iphone before and everyone had it with them so it was very easy to get to what we wanted to achieve very fast I'm sorry to harp on the technical stuff, but you said you just have an iPad. Did you see that Apple is doing a thing where you can direct iPhones from the iPad? They'll have like a camera app where you can 
wow. uh, live direct in the in the, I think it's called Final Cut Camera is what it's going to be called. That's it, amazing. But, I didn't hear about it. Yeah, but I imagine again going back to saving time. I, I'm yeah. sure that'll save a lot of time just doing multicam right from the iPad. And yeah, that yeah. sounds amazing. And then you know I'm sure you've got a MacBook so. You could pull that in airdrop and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, getting out of the technical stuff, I'd love to ask a mega question. First, how does it feel to be in Tribeca? I I can't remember. Is this your debut feature or so? How does it that's part one? How does it feel getting into Tribeca being in the viewpoints category? And then uh, the second part would be what do you want audiences to take away from seeing it at Tribeca? It feels amazing. I'm so happy to be here. I was born in LA and lived in New York until I was five, and I haven't been here for a very long time. So it's exciting to be back. And in this, in these circumstances, it's extra special. And I would really just love the audience to to have a personal connection to it. You know, like the title, "Come Closer," just like to be close to the story, to feel it on their own skin and their own hearts, like not to be distant from it. I really love cinema that feels personal to you. Like, for example, like if if a film is your favorite film and then someone else loves it and you say like, thank you, like you made it, but you didn't even make it. It's just so important and personal to you. I feel like this is the best thing you can do with cinema. Yeah, I mean, I think that's why a lot of people come to either the movie theater wherever they watch movies is because of that personal connection you know i think without that you lose a lot you know being part of a community that loves the film together right even the guy who you know screams look around the corner in a horror movie Mm -hmm. and then i have to kind of roll my eyes uh, or or uh spoil something but uh that's a topic for another day uh tom i want to Thank you uh, so much for sharing your time and your insights and letting me go on tangents about video editing and (laughs) uh, iPhones and things like that. Um, For those watching or listening that will be in Tribeca, you can catch Come Closer this Thursday at the Village East Angelica at 6 p.m. And then there will be a second screening at the same location this Saturday, June 8th at 12.15 p.m. Reminder, both times there are, are an Eastern time. So if you're like coming from, I don't know, Connecticut, make sure you have like time zone app or something like that, uh, or open the clock app to make sure you've got the right times. Links to both of those screenings will be located in the description so you can buy your tickets. And I'll have a review of Come Closer this Thursday, June 6th, along with all the other Tribeca coverage you think and expect throughout the month of June. But thank you again, Tom, for taking time out of your Let's see. Is it morning? Yeah, morning. Sit down and talk with me. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, no problem. I hope you have a great Tribeca. It, it's looking like a good one. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too. Bye.